Well, what somebody's going to first start to experience is that their extremities, and particularly the hands or exposed parts of their body, will start to feel cold. Then they may actually start to feel numb or tingling. As that progresses, and, the, and they are out in the cold for a longer period of time, what they'll start to notice is that they may actually start to develop a, a waxy or a, a waxy type appearance to the skin is what we call it. The skin kind of gets a pale but kind of firm look to it. And that's really the initial first signs. Uh, you'll see these guys come off Mount Everest with black noses and black ears. Well, that's really, really bad frostbite. That's, hopefully we don't see too much of that. And these conditions that we're experiencing now with low temperatures and high winds, which really make it quite severe as far as the wind chill factor goes, young people are exposed at risk, people who work outside, firemen are exposed because of the fires they've been fighting lately in the cold, windy weather. I mean, you've seen the pictures on the news of the ice hanging off everything when they're at those fire scenes. Uh, even your mailman can be exposed if he's out there all day long delivering mail and doesn't get in out of the cold from time to time. Um, so anyone who's out exposed in the cold and not protected is at risk and it doesn't take long with you know uh, zero degree temperatures minus 10 minus 20 below wind chills you're looking at minutes for some people to start experiencing signs or symptoms of frostbite if you're outside and you come in and you feel that oh my hands are really kind of feeling funny and maybe I have some frostbite the one thing you don't want to do is rub them together because that's the worst thing you can do. That's going to add another injury or another type of injury to what's already starting to happen. What you want to do is rewarm those body parts and the way to do that is water that's roughly about your same body temperature. You want to get a large bowl so that you're not in contact with the sides of the bowl if it's your hand. Put it into that warm water, gently, gently manipulate your hand to kind of circulate the water around and make sure it's really well thawed because one of the problems we find a lot of times is that patients will have frostbite and they'll thaw it out but not completely and they have some refreezing and then they go rethaw it again and now you're setting up a cycle of injury to the tissues as opposed to one injury. Well frostbite is a thermal injury unlike being exposed to heat or fire where it's what we generally consider a burn with frostbite, you're getting cellular damage that occurs because of the freezing of the water and within the tissues or within the cells. And a lot of the uh, tissues will go through the same type changes that burns will go through. And so more times than not, because we kind of be, we're kind of the ex experts in how to deal with these large open wounds, uh, most patients who have any significant injury will come and be treated in a burn center. Frost, frostbite injuries can occur, you know, depending upon the, the temperatures, pretty quickly. And what some people notice is that they can develop some blistering. And that blistering can progress to what we call hemorrhagic blistering, where it's now, instead of being clear blisters, they're filled with blood or bloody fluid. And when you start cleaning some of these areas off, you're going to find that tissue is still purplish underneath. And those are at risk for amputation. 